Let's welcome in our line opinion panelists for the week. We're joined by attorney Laura Sanchez. She's always great to have on. Dave Mulryan, president of Mulryan Nash Advertising is with us and former state representative Daniel Foley. Thank you all for being here, appreciate it. Now, a suspect has been arrested, guys, tied to at least one of a string of shots fired incidents near the homes and offices of lawmakers. But to this point, as we tape this on Thursday midday, that suspect hasn't been charged in any of those cases. So Laura, let me ask you this to start off. How does this impact the atmosphere heading into the governor's state of the state address Tuesday and the rest of the session? Any carry over there, should we be concerned? Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. I think it does carry over. I think there's going to be a different a heightened level of awareness for sure about what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, for, for one, like we've they've already had uh, metal detectors at the entrances. So you already have to go through certain entrances and um, be able to uh, basically have to get um, wanded if you don't pass through the machine. And so I think that we're going to see a lot more of that, more mm -hmm. scrutiny, so probably longer lines. That's an important precaution mm -hmm. and one that we should have been taking years ago because it's open otherwise um, to anybody who can walk in. So that's a problem. Um, and I know that for a lot of legislators, not just for the ones that were targeted, but others, they've had concerns about their public information being up on the website or their right. information, their home address and so forth, being up on the website for a long time. Um, so it's great that they're finally taking that down. And I think we need to do what we can to try to protect people because they're really just trying to do their job. Right. Um, and this is a serious safety concern, I think, for everybody. Daniel, obviously you are our elected person here on the panel this week. I'm curious how this all sort of hits you. And specifically, are you thinking that should the governor address this situation in her state of the state address? Curious about your, your opinion on that. Yeah, no, I think the more attention you give these actions, the more crazy people want to try to get attention. That's one of the problems. You know, I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, I mean, look, there's, there's a culmination of problems here. One, we have an, we have an absolutely out of hand crime problem in, in the Albuquerque area. Um, and it has been going that way for quite a while. And so, you know, I think this is just a, a, a tell of the times. I mean, when I was in, our information was public, our, our home addresses, our phone numbers, you know, I mean, I remember, I remember my wife got death threats. I got a death threat. Um, you just kept going on. I mean, I remember somehow some guy from the from jail got my home number and was calling my house when I was gone. Wow. And, uh, you know, I had a I wound up getting a death threat once and uh, wound up with some security for a while. What doesn't help, though, is the secrecy behind. We have someone that's a suspect possibly in custody. I mean, I think that the thing that 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 nips this stuff in the butt right away is when they're swift, there's action. Mm -hmm. They tell you what they're doing and they're deliberate with their actions. And when they do this, when there's this veil of secrecy that we have a person of interest or we're not sure what we're doing. I mean, it, it can't be that difficult uh, to track down people that are doing this type of a crime in Albuquerque if you're serious about tracking them down. I mean, there seems to be, they're, they're taking the right steps now. The right steps are they're providing security, uh, the security at the homes. And I think that, you know, what's gonna happen is, is that we're gonna, they're eventually gonna get somebody or figure something out. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I think, you know, closing down the Capitol and taking off all the people's home information. I mean, at the end of the day, you're choosing to represent the people and you got to be able to let the people have access to you. And I, but I do think the but government Daniel, needs to let take me, a let me ask you this, to Daniel, them. Daniel, let me ask you this. Does this shots were fired? I mean, I hear what you're saying, and that's all well and good when you're talking about just using verbal, you know, attack. Shots were fired into people's homes. Does this not change the equation for you? Oh, no. I mean, Gene, it's a horrible thing that was done. I understand that. But what do we do now? Do we go back to telling these individuals that are serving, stay home, don't have access to your constituents, we're not going to do this anymore? There needs to be action to catch the people that have done this. Sure. There needs to be swift action, and it needs to be direct action. I think talking about it, giving more publicity, every time we find out about the people that could commit these types of crimes, overwhelmingly they're seeking one thing, publicity. 
They're seeking publicity. And the more that everybody goes on talking about this and letting everybody know what the steps are that are being taken and how everybody's worried and upset about it, you're feeding these sick people that are doing these types of crimes. And I think at the end of the day, you just let these guys get arrested, prosecuted, and get the, get, get prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. That's what's going to stop this stuff from happening. David, um, Orion, does this change how lawmakers will approach their work? And I'm using the word work here because, as we all know, uh, there is some movement on gun reform laws. I mean, all kinds of different things they're going to be talking yes. about during the session. Does this change things? Well, you know, Day Hockman Vihill wrote, put up a Facebook post addressing specifically that, you know, they were at being targeted, being, their houses were being shot at. Her point was, you know, we do this. We don't really, we don't get paid for it or we get paid very little for it. We do it because we feel like, you know, we should do it. We, we have the skills to do it. And I think that's a good point. But also, you know, this is sort of a strange thing, but let's see if we can make the leap. David, I'm going to interrupt for just a quick sec. Yes. I'm going to let you do your thing there. I see the screen okay, just kind of bounce around a little bit. I want to ask Laura uh, when you come back here. But Laura, let me ask you this. We can't dance around the fact that Democrats have been targeted here. What, what does that mean for a Democrat? If you're, you're an elected and you're a Democrat, you know, this is no small thing. Right. No, I think that that is, um, is exactly right. And for Democrats, there's definitely going to be, I think, an increased um, amount of concern. Mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, there's speculation about if there's an organized group, an organized effort. Is this right. just a lone person? Right. Um, and I think that goes back to what... Um, what Dan was saying with not having any information right now. And I mean, I, I hope I hope that we and I want to trust in law enforcement that they're doing what they need to do right now, not releasing information because mm -hmm. perhaps they're trying to make a connection to other individuals. And that's probably why they're not naming somebody. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's best to uh, uncover whether this is an organized group, um, some sort of political attack, some kind of, you know, whatever it is. But the fact that they've all been Democrats is hugely concerning, I think, for the caucus. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that Republicans are immune to it. I right. think that these concerns um, from both sides are going, going to exist and anybody could be targeted. So we should all be, I think, all of us, including, you know, obviously the legislators, but all of us who are up at the roundhouse on a regular basis or even just citizens who go up there, they should be safe, feel comfortable going up there and not have to fear that there's somebody lurking in the, you know, in the bushes, ready to mm -hmm. take someone out. And mm -hmm. that's the sort of fear that I think will be um, a real concern this session. So everybody hopefully will be patient with the procedures that they have set in place to be able to ensure everybody's safety. Mm -hmm. um, and that we all kind of stay alert to anything that looks out of place. Um, and report something, you know, if, if it does look out of place. That, I'm glad you, I'm glad I mean, you we mentioned keep talking about We keep we, talking about it being all Democrats, but I think, the I mean, this has all happened in Albuquerque, hasn't it? Uh, and, pretty much, yeah, right yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think you got one Republican in Albuquerque now. So, I mean, the law of numbers are that it's going to be somebody of the Democrat Party in Albuquerque. If you did this down in Roswell or Alamogordo, you know, it would be Republicans. So, you know, I, I think so you're, you're I'm saying not sure it's you're saying be, you're saying it's not a targeted thing for Democrats. Gene, it's just I'm not more saying of a any of that thing. stuff. I'm saying, Gene, listen to me, Gene, hold on. Stop saying what I don't say on the show. Dan, you're saying this. I'm no investigator. I don't know mm -hmm. what's happening. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, is that before we go down the deal about this is a targeted attack only, I'm offering an alternative opinion that it's in the city of Albuquerque, which is 98% elected Democrats right now. So before we say it's just a it's an organized attack against Democrats. It may just be a geographic attack is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make the attack good uh, any better. That doesn't uh -huh. make it OK. Uh, I'm just saying I'm not sure how much of this is an organized political cabal. Well, I also think that, mm -hmm. that, that you know, if, if it is sort of just the law of averages, let's say the fact that there are more Democrats in the city mm -hmm. and it's sort of easier to target them, I think that raises the concern that when everybody gets together in Santa Fe from both sides of the aisle and everybody's sort of up there collectively, right. That's that right. we, it's that much more important to keep people, people safe because there are a lot more people um, from both sides of the aisle and the whole spectrum on both parties, because there is a spectrum in each party of folks ideologically. So we have to be careful in general to make sure not just the electeds, but staff and visitors and everybody who's participating in the process um, have a safe experience. So I think that's why I'm looking forward to the safety measures that they will take. I'm certain that they will heighten all of that. 
I'm sure we'll see a lot more state police on the on the um, state capitol uh, grounds. Mm -hmm. But I think that's all important, and hopefully people will have patience with that and understand that it's for everybody's safety. You know, interesting, just to uh, backtrack a little bit, folks, it started on December 4th. I, you, you might recall that, bullets in Berlioz County Commissioner Adrian Barboa's family home. And then a week later, Attorney General Raul Torres's campaign office, a day after that on December 11th, gunshots were fired at Debbie O'Malley's uh, adobe home. And then on Tuesday, January 3rd, Senator Linda Lopez, and Thursday, January 5th, more bullets were fired at the law offices of uh, Antonio Mo Maestas. So there's a lot going on out there, guys. It's not as if this is like one crazy little thing. And Dave, let me see if we can slip you back in for one last sure. thing here. I know you've had some technical issues. We appreciate your patience. Just take us home on this subject. What's the, <laughs> and there goes your signal again. Go. I, hold on, I'll get it. That's all right. I guess, I guess um, what we're trying to get to here is what's, is there a solution of some sort before we get to next Well, Thursday? I mean, there may before be a solution, far, but I would also but say I it also seems think... to be a county commission problem. Go ahead, Dave. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, I think that in a strange way, you know, people are interested in participating in politics. And for some people, the idea that you, you do some sort of individual kind of January 6th against politicians maybe working for them. I don't know. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. and you know, we, we see what happened in the Capitol. We see it happening. You know, we're shooting up legislators' homes in New Mexico. You know, we had an attack on the Capitol in Brazil. It's like, you know, somehow this has become a part of politics in some weird way. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like people want to participate and that's what they're, they decided to do. I don't know. It's very strange, right? It is. That's a good way to put it up there uh, for a finish. It is very strange. Thanks for our lineup your panel. We'll meet back here at the virtual roundtable in just over 10 minutes to talk about a startling drop in public school enrollment around the state and here in Albuquerque.